Before kicking off with the video, I want to provide a brief outline what I'm going to discuss uh, in the course of the video in the next minutes. Main topic, rangefinder cameras. Rangefinder cameras are by many people today considered as outdated, uh, tediously to operate because they are manual, they have no autofocus and people prefer DSLRs and DSLMs with quick autofocus, autofocus points covering most of the sensor, uh, 3D tracking, face tracking, eye detection, all these kind of techniques useful uh, in all kinds of situations in photography. I personally believe if you're interested in street photography or in reportage photography, there's nothing quicker than a range finder camera. And the reason why I safely claim this is a technique called range focusing. And range focusing is a way to set up your camera and lens that within the prescribed range, everything will be in focus without the camera having to focus or to be focused by the photographer. And that is very useful because uh, you basically then not even lose a fraction of a second of making sure you don't miss that moment in time when the scene is in a way that you want to have that picture on your sensor and uh, on your SD card. And the extreme way of doing range focusing is hyperfocal, hyperfocal distance. And hyperfocal distance is that focusing distance where half the way back from that distance towards the photographer and from there all the way up to infinity, everything in that range will be in focus. And uh, I'm going to demonstrate how to uh, set up the hyperfocal distance on a lens so that you get a huge depth of field for landscape photography, architecture, or as I said before, for you know taking shots in a way that you want to have everything sharp and uh, you do not care about a bouquet or the blurriness some people want to have in some of those pictures. Um, I also want to cover briefly the depth of field tables provided uh, by the manufacturers of those rangefinder lenses because that's a way that even when you have not the camera and the lens in your hand, you can look it up in that table how to set up the camera and lens in a way that in the prescribed range everything will be in focus. And uh, I'm going to demonstrate this by means of a Leica lens where we go to the download section, we look at the specification sheet of that lens and I'm going to explain quickly how these tables have to be read and how useful they are for street photography or reportage photography. Everything I'm going to show will happen with the Leica M10P and I use the Safari edition here. The Safari edition is a green colored edition uh, which Leica uh, actually offers from time to time on selected models of their camera series uh, as a limited edition and uh, I personally believe this color is very beautiful and I should say I traded in my M10 to get the M10P. Everything will also work of course on the Leica M10 and the Leica M classical even including the monochrome and everything in that Leica M family and uh, the only difference between the M10 and the M10P is that you get on the M10P uh, a nice new touch screen on the back of the camera on the LCD display and you also get that might be more important a more silent shutter and that makes your photography less intrusive to the people around you and then last but not least I'm going to show a series of sample photos taken in Zurich yesterday and I actually hope that these pictures convince people that focusing is easy things get sharp and in focus, the coloring is nice from the sensor, it's a very natural appearance of the photos and I only uploaded them to Lightroom because I had to process them from DNG which is the raw format uh, at Leica to JPEG but only minor tweaking in Lightroom, minor adjustments and these pictures just hopefully speak for themselves. Let's get started. What you see here is the Leica M10 minus P or M10P in short which is a remake of the Leica M10 where some people say this is the best rangefinder camera Leica ever made. What I have here is a special edition, you see that green here, it's called the Safari edition and Leica used to make special editions in Safari color from the 1960s on. Now what you also see here is a special lens, lens I have on this one here, it's a 28 millimeter Summeron uh, with a widest aperture of f5.6 I come back to that lens later in my review and uh, it's a pretty nice camera. So the big difference between a rangefinder camera and between a DSLR or DSLM or what have you 
is that you have an optical viewfinder which is not through the lens. In typical cameras like the Sony DSLMs or DSLRs, you basically look through the lens or TTL, which you also use in flashing terminology. Here you look through an optical viewfinder and I'm going to show the technique to focus with a classical rangefinder later on in that video. What you also see here, this is the M mount. Leica has a huge number of lenses you can mount on M cameras. It's one of the best sorted, I think, lens portfolios you can have for a camera. This is basically to unlock the lens here and uh, you have a customizable button here and then you have manual controls on top of that camera. Okay, so let's turn this camera so that we see what's on the back on that rangefinder here. Okay, so that's basically what it looks like from behind. You have your viewfinder here, which is the uh, rangefinder technique I talked about and I'm going to talk about in greater detail in a moment. You have a control button here, a control wheel here, three buttons which you can use. So if we switch the camera on, we basically get a live view here. If you want, there's nothing important going on here because this is just boringly in my office. Um, you can switch the live view off, which is convenient because when I'm going to show you range focusing later, you actually don't need a live view and you can save battery in this way. You have a play button where you can see pictures taken. This is a picture I took last night in Zurich uh, and you have a menu. Sorry, let me go away from this. You have a menu here for shooting and these menus are highly customizable. So I can actually choose my favorites and make sure every favorite I need in terms of menu items is just one click away. And then you can, of course, uh, scroll around via your control wheel here and get all kinds of adjustments set up on your camera. Interesting part of uh, the Leica M10P is at the very top and you see here this is basically your ISO wheel so you can use ISO here and it's locked and I like that a lot because it used to happen to me on other cameras that I accidentally touched some scroll wheel and all of a sudden the ISO value is not in a way or in a range where I wanted it to have so you have to pull this up firmly and then you can rotate and you see there, it starts with 100 ISO, it goes up on that wheel to 6400. And uh, you also have automatic and manual where you can do further adjustments because this camera allows you to choose an ISO up to 50,000, which I don't use because I don't think it's a meaningful value for an ISO setting. Then you have here basically your shutter speed this one is not locked, but you need quite some grip to turn it. And this goes to one over 4,000 seconds and then all the way to uh, slower shutter speeds. And you can go up to eight seconds here. And actually, if you um, go into bulk mode, you can use 120 seconds here, which is nice for night exposures and night shots. And of course you have an automatic mode. So a typical setting in a range focusing, what I'm going to cover later is, you probably for street photography would set your shutter speed at 1 over 125 and you would go to an ISO value as automatically chosen based on your changing lighting conditions. As I said, it's safe with that camera to go up to 3200 ISO or even 6400. I wouldn't use the extended range up to 50,000 but 6400 will be just fine and then you adjust on the lens the range focusing you want to have and then it's basically like a point and shoot camera. So you go out there and just take your shots without thinking will the image be sharp, will it have the correct amount of light and I would say in my personal humble opinion this is even the better way of doing street photography than using one of the modern cameras with autofocus where you never know whether the focus catches exactly what you want and uh, by the way, the way you do it with range focusing, it will also be quick. So what you see here is my smartphone focusing on a picture of Albert Einstein. Um, you should not look at the little frame 
which appears from time to time on Albert Einstein's face because that's the focus indicator of my smartphone. What you need to look at is the picture, which is my object I want to focus on, and then this little ghost image in rectangle form, which you see moving now when I turn the focus ring. And in order to get a clean and sharp picture, you need to match that ghost image with your object which you want to have in focus, like right now. Now it's sharp. So you see I can move this ghost image here in that rectangle across the different uh, focus distances and when it is matching, look in particular at Albert Einstein's right hand side upper arm. When it is matching, you see it on the border of the t-shirt, then it is sharp, such right now. In order to explain how a rangefinder works, um, I have in focus here a Summicron M lens from Leica. Uh, the focal length is 35 millimeter, as you can see here on the lower left hand side bottom. And the first element we want to look at is the aperture ring. It's actually the one on top. You see I rotate it here and you can go from a wide open aperture of 2 and can stop it down to a fairly well closed aperture of f60. The next element uh, we want to look at is the distance scale. The distance scale, which is uh, the ring now uh, turning left and right hand side, is used to focus the lens. So for instance, the minimum distance I can focus with this lens is 0.7 meters. And I can focus, of course, like with every lens, up to infinity. The last element of that lens is the depth of field scale, and it's just here. And what you see here are f-stop numbers. And these f sub numbers with lines are connected to the distance scale. So uh, how can we use that? Let's see. So for instance, if we go to, let's say, an aperture f8, which is fairly well closed, we'll do the trick for landscape photography. Typically, lets in enough light, but gives you a large wide depth of field. Then you can actually decide where your main focus, should, sorry, where your main focus should be so let's say your main focus is at uh, 4 meters, so here. And now you can use the depth of field scale to read off the range within everything should be fairly well in focus. Let's look how this works. So we go to the f-stop number here, that's f8. We follow the line up to here and we see this is somewhere between 10 meters and infinity. So quite some distance. We do the same at the left hand side and we go to f8, we follow the line, we see this is a bit on top of 2 meters. So everything between 2 meters and 10 plus meters will be in focus. Now if this is too wait for me because the 10 and the infinity are pretty close together here, I can probably just decide to go to 5 meters as the main focus point here. And then what I get is if I go to f8, which is the aperture I've chosen here, I see this is now focusing up to infinity and uh, it's starting to be fairly well in focus uh, somewhere between two and three meters. So in other words, if I shoot the camera with this setup on my manual lens, everything between two and a half meters and infinity will be fairly well in focus. Actually, what we just did here is a technique called range focusing. And it's a typical technique photographers use, especially on old film cameras to not waste time for that moment where the shot should be taken with focus. So if you're a street photographer, if you are in uh, uh, reporting photography, you need to catch that one moment, which might be fractions of a second. And then even modern cameras who have very quick and fast autofocus might not be able to catch that shot. With a rangefinder, it's not a problem because you can focus on a pre-range where you think the object you want to target for will be placed. And of course, the more you close the aperture, the wider your depth of field, and the more sure you can be that what is in that range will be in focus. So let's do another example for um, range focusing. Let's say we go to F11. F11 is something that is pretty well handled by Leica M cameras, and even if it goes up in the ISO level a little bit, the pictures will be just perfect because the sensor quality of those sensors is just terrific. Now, let's say uh, we want to focus on a range 
in street photography typically should be somewhere let's say f11 is uh, just here so when we want to go to let's say we want to have this up to 10 meters so we can now adjust and align the 10 meters here with the line leading to a stop f11 and then I see on the left hand side what this gives to me is if I'm going to 11 here and up it's 1.5 meters so that's a fairly well range for street photography you get close but not too close so basically between 1.5 meters and 10 meters now everything will be in focus and stop at an aperture of 11. So the last element I want to show here is uh, the so-called hyperfocal distance. And the hyperfocal distance can be calculated, it can be read off from depth of field tables. Every Leica lens has a manual with a depth of field table or documented somewhere where you can actually see what combination of focus point and uh, aperture will give you what depth of field. And the hyperfocal distance in a nutshell is defined as that distance if you focus on that point everything half the way back from that point and from half the way back of that point up to infinity will be in focus. So it gives you the best and widest range of sharp focus what you typically want to use in landscape or in photos where you don't want to have that blur coming from the bokeh and where you don't want to play with um, you know blurring and unblurring elements of your picture. Now let's see how the hyperfocal distance can be adjusted here. First of all, we decide for an aperture. Let's this time say we go for a wide open lens with f2.8. Now all I have to do now is to use my focus ring with the distance scale and place the infinity point just up at the line here, which goes down to the f-stop 2.8. Then I know, based on the logic I presented before on uh, range focusing, that now everything up to infinity, if I pre-adjust to an aperture of f2.8, will be in focus. Now the question is, what will be this, the point of focus on the left-hand side of the range? And there I have to go up to f2.8, and I see this is above 5 meters, between 5 and 10 meters. Let's say give or take 7 meters, so if you are standing on a bridge, and you have water below you, you can be pretty sure that everything between you and the 7 meter distance needs not to be in focus, but everything beyond that will be in focus up to infinity even if you shoot wide open with f2.8. That's the way hyperfocal distance works. Let's make another example with a more closed aperture. Let's go to the extreme here. Let's close the aperture to f16. And now let's adjust the infinity to f16 you see that here here is the 16 here is the line it lines up on a distance scale with infinity so now I know I stop this down to f16 everything up to infinity will be in focus let's see what we get on the left hand side of the depth of field we go to 16 we go up to here and we find this is 1.2 meters so now if we operate camera and lens in this mode everything between 1.2 meters and infinity will be pretty well in focus. As an alternative to looking up uh, for range focusing, the depth of field and the range on the lens itself, you can also look into the data specs of a particular lens. I'm going to illustrate this on the Leica lens I mounted before on my camera. Let's say this is 28 millimeters, it's the 5.6 widest open aperture. Uh, you go on the Leica homepage, you find your lens description here, and somewhere in those sections you will find downloads. If you scroll down on the downloads, you find the technical data or technical specifications. You can download the sheet, and then if you open this up, you get all the specifications of your lens. Let's magnify this a little bit so here is everything you want to know about the lens uh, but then going down you actually see here there is a table which is called the depth of field table and that table has in the horizontal direction your f-stops 
So the widest open aperture for that lens is f5.6. The most stop down aperture is f22. And in the vertical direction, you have your distances. So this is 1 meter, 1.1, 1.2. It goes all the way down to infinity. Now, if you want to go for a particular aperture, let's say you want to shoot in a preset, uh, prescribed setup uh, with f11. And I think that's actually a good aperture for street photography because it gives you wide uh, depth of field. And you would focus at two meters. Then that table, pre-calculated by the Leica engineers, gives to you that your range of focus will be from 1.1 meters to close to 90 meters. And that's a perfect range for getting things and objects sharp for street photography or reportage photography because you want to get close in order to capture the scene but you don't want to get too close and you also want to keep a distance. And this gives you a range from 1.1 meter to 90 meter and everything in that range will be pretty well in focus.